James Elder, Eiffel TV, MTK Global. With me, I've got WM middleweight champion Billy Joe Saunders. We're here today at the workouts. First, how are you, champ? I'm good, my man. I'm good. I'm good. How I'm was Fort uh, Ventura for you? Yeah, good. First of all, I just want to say I'm not doing no more interviews with Coogan. Well, what's the beef with Coogan? What's the problem? Well, I've heard about the manhood, you know? Go on, um, tell me, explain. James, listen, we just had an off the record um, chat. And uh, you was telling me about Coogan's man. Now, just for the viewers... I can't... I possibly just, could not comment on that, Just Bill. for the viewers, I swear to God, James was just telling me, I'm not going to say whether it's extra small or extra big, but I can't comment on until I have a chat with him. And it scared me, to be honest with you. It scared me. The size of the man, being a bit of a Sri Lankan tank, what would you expect? The Sri Lankan tank? Listen, you shot with Sunny the bonnet, wouldn't you? I need that time. <laughs> no, but all good, all good. I'm all good, James. Anyway, I'm all good, mate. Um, training's going well. Getting ready for the 14th. Just here today. Sport Calbrook and a few other lads from the gym on the undercard. Mm. And that's about it. Scheduled to face Martin Murray, as you mentioned. Do you see this as a as a routine defence? You see it as a harder fight than people are anticipating. What, what goes through your mind? Most definitely, I see it as a hard fight. Don't see it as no easy fight. Any world title fight is not easy for what's just on the line alone but I think Martin's he knows it's one of his last throw of the dice so I think he's going to shake him very hard and have a good throw. Mm. Stylistically do you think it'll be a harder fight for you than what people expect with your so, style yeah. or Martin's style? I, I personally think so yeah. I think that's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a bit grueling at times as well. I reckon we're both going to have to dig. Mm. I think that's the type of fight you can show what you've improved on fitness wise and where uh, you're at with the level of of sort of technique you're putting in with Dominic Ingram? Maybe so, maybe so. I think that with Martin, it's just, you know, it is what it says on the tin, isn't it? You're in for a tough night, no matter who you are and who you're not. Um, it just is what it is. I think, don't mistake me, I think he's the last man to go all them rounds with Glockin before for, um, the Canelo fight. So, And I personally thought he won the Canelo fight. So you've got to take it off to Martin. He's a, uh, he's a sound man, he deserves his chance. Um, and the reason why he's got so many shots is because he gives such a good account of himself. And let's face it, up my opinion is he should have been champion twice of the world. But so everything happens for a reason and we're here on the 14th, so we'll see. Mm. A lot of boxing fans say that. His performance out in Argentina, and as you mentioned, against Sturm in Germany. Two great, great performances and rightly so should have had the belt. A million percent. I think that, um, I personally think that he should have most definitely come through Argentina's test. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed you up. Yeah, and uh, he give a good account of himself. And, and to be honest, when people say he's about um, southpaws and orthodox, he's been even probably the, the slickest southpaw in the world, Martinez, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought he won. Let's talk a little bit about Sol Canelo Alvarez, Gennady Golovkin, the potential rematch May the 5th. We've heard rumours that potentially Golovkin's team have been in, in talks to offer the potential fight to yourself. Is there anything you can tell us about that? Look, all a load of shit. Canelo, Canelo's, Canelo's advisors have told Frank Warren, more or less, it won't happen. Can't blame him. Um, obviously, I'm not, I'm not the suited stand there Mexican style for Canelo to tee off of him, but... Golovkin, I'm not saying they're scared, but you know, their, their advisors and their management teams are a bit sceptical. So I think I've got more of a chance with um, with Golovkin because we all know he's a warrior, fight anybody, he'll go anywhere to fight anybody, and I respect him for that. But I also think that I've got something that can unravel him. And I'd like to show it. Do you Love feel do you feel you'll get a chance everything goes right against Murray to, to fight to face the winner <coughs> of Golovkin Canelo? I personally think that who who don't who don't want to show that show that bit of want to unify from both of us. There's obviously something wrong. One of us are thinking we don't want it. So if if, if it don't happen on my behalf, listen, I'm willing to go anywhere to fight. Have you signed to fight him before? I signed to fight him twice, so, and signed to fight Canelo twice. Sent off and done. Which, to, to, to all fairness to Frank Warren, he's delivered what he said he'd deliver. And also that the, the big fights, 
well, was supposed to happen. It wasn't our party's fault. We was ready to rock and roll. We was ready, same as we did Canada. That mm. happened. Fair play to David Lemieux. He took the he took the uh, he took the fight. Um, well, I say oh, I took the fight. You know, he wouldn't come to England, and you know, it was what it says on the tin. I went over there and just bashed him up, and that was it, really. What do you think that being on HBO in America, having that prime time slot's done for your profile since <clears> then, Bill? Do you know what? It was it, it was uh, it was a good trip, all round good trip. Um, they was we had a good banter me and the team on camp. Obviously, that I got paid a hell of a lot for going there, and, and compared to what it was here as well, um, everything this went perfect. Everything the fight went perfect. The, the, you know what I mean? Everything this profile, everything this went absolutely perfect there, and. Um, I think it done me good stead fighting on HBO, something different. And what that did for me as well, that also, that also put put in me what I need. Like if I have got to go abroad now, I know what it's about. I know when they don't send a car for you and they don't do this and they don't. Do you know what I mean? You just know. And that little tester, that everything happens for a reason. And that was there just to experience it. I don't mind travelling to America, or travelling to Kazakhstan. I'll do that wherever they want. I'll have it. Uh, but first of all, I will not be overlooking Martin Murray. Martin Murray has to be beaten first. You don't just get in there and it happens. You have to beat Martin Murray, simple. I would like to get your exclusive breakdown now on George Groves taking on Chris Eubank Jr. in the World Boxing Super Series semi-final. What are your thoughts on firstly on that fight? First of all, I think that <coughs> Eubank's dad will now be stroking him somewhere and touching him up, keeping him warm, keeping him comfortable. Look, do you know what, I sparred Groves. I've been in the ring with Eubank. Genuinely, it's a fight where <clears throat> people say, what's left in Groves' tank? That's what I want to know, you know? What's left, because Eubank's got a good work rate. There's one thing you can say about Eubank, he's got a very good work rate. Don't punch hard. Not a good boxer. Not good on his, not, not good on his feet. But got a good work rate, he puts the punches together. I can see I can see it panning out. Eubank winning the early rounds and work rate and Groves catching him. Or Eubank's outworking him. Or maybe Groves. I personally, if it goes to points, I'm going to have to favour Eubank. If it goes to points. If there's a knockout, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Groves. You fought him at 160. How much more powerful do you think Chris Eubank Jr. will be at 160? None. None. Because he got in that ring with me, what he'd get in there when he weighs in at 12 stone anyway. And to look at George Groves, to look at George Groves and Eubank, the side of each other, the size difference is second to none. The size difference is like, it looks like three stone difference. Because he's, George Groves probably walks around that cruiserweight, you know? Well, Eubank don't walk, probably don't leave that around that weight, eight or 10 pound. And don't be wrong, it is good to be fit all the time, good to be in the gym, and, but sometimes that can catch up with you on big fights like this. So it's an interesting fight though, fair play, it's an interesting fight, fair play to both of them for taking the fight. Good luck to both of them for, for you know, it's, it's nice to see people making a few quid, so you've got to say good luck to them. But um, it's also a fight that, is, you know, it's a, it's a good fight. It is a genuinely good fight, so if, if this was a fight that when Eubank fights, I tell people not even bother watching, I would say watch this fight, because it will be a good fight, personally. How proud are you now, looking back, of the win over Chris Eubank Jr.? How satisfying is it to have that over him at this point in time? Listen, in my heart, in my heart, my head, I know that Chris Eubank Jr. never beat me as long as he's got a hole in his ass. When Eubank boxes someone has got a bit of movement, and he gets beat, people's going to go, oh, he had a bad night, but it's not. Horses for courses. George Groves can't afford to hold his feet in this fight. Because if he does, if he does, he'll get outworked. He can't hold his feet. So your tip for George Groves would be movement. Movement, lateral movement, head movement, kid and faint. Always brighten that jab, because he won't come in. Once you get used in a jab with you, mate, he hesitates about coming in. He then tries to leap in with three and four punches to overwhelm you. Jab, jab, when he does that, right hand through. Hurt him early, slam him down. Mm.
If there was a middleweight version of the World Boxing Super Series, would you and your team consider entering it? Is that something that ticks the boxes for yourself, really, Joe? It all depends, doesn't it? I mean, um, brother, it all depends because, look, when you're, you know, for world champions to enter them sort of tournaments, it's got to be worth their while. Do you know what I mean? Because there's big fights to be made elsewhere. So it's really got to be worth your while. And listen, it probably is worth their while. They're probably getting a few quid for it. But it's really got to be worth my while. Like, I want to, I just don't, I wouldn't really want to keep fighting opponents that I know I can deal with comfortable. Do you know what I mean? I want to fight someone now, see how good I am. I want to see how good I am. Am I good enough to beat Golovkin? In my own head, in my heart, I know I am. But I've got to show it. It's no good me saying I am, but I, I have to show it. And the only, the only re real way I'm going to do that is when I fight someone who's, who's up there, you know what I mean? Right up there. So we'll see.